there was a way to make hippocampal anatomy memorable. Here's a short video on the basics of hippocampal anatomy that will hopefully stay in your, well, hippocampus. The name hippocampus comes from its shape on gross anatomy. The word hippocampus is literally a combination of the words for horse and sea animal in Greek. Horse plus sea equals sea horse. Early anatomists thought that the hippocampus looked like an upside down seahorse with its curved tail resembling the tail of a seahorse. So hippocampus literally means seahorse. In cross section, it has a spiral appearance leading to its other name, cornu aminus, translated to Amon's horn. Amon was a Greek god with spiraling ram's horn. Anatomists thought that the spiraling appearance of the gray matter of the hippocampus looked like the spiral of Amon's horn. This is why the hippocampal subfields that denote the neuronal regions of the hippocampus are abbreviated CA1, CA2, CA3, etc., standing for cornu aminus. Cornu aminus is, of course, a mouthful to say, and repeating it over and over in an anatomy video is uh, tons of fun for me. So, enough with the history. Let's begin with the hippocampal anatomy. First is the hippocampal head. It has a wavy appearance called the pes hippocampus, meaning hippocampal foot, because the waves look kind of like toes to someone. I don't like this name because it's the hippocampal head and a head shouldn't have toes, so I think that they look like teeth. So if you see teeth, it makes sense that you're in the head. So look for teeth to know whether or not you're in the hippocampal head. In the region of the hippocampal head, the amygdala sits above the hippocampus. I remember this because A for amygdala is also for above. Amygdala is above. Amygdala means almond because it's shaped like an almond. And this makes sense for me to remember because when I hear almond, I think of almond eyes and eyes are in the head. So you only see the amygdala when you are in the head because almond eyes are in the head. As we go more posterior, we come to the body. The body is where you see the spiraling line that is the cornu aminus. The cornu aminus spirals into the dentate nucleus, which is cupped around the cornu aminus so that they look like a yin yang. You can see this yin yang on imaging. You can follow the T2 dark line of the cornu aminus until it spirals into the bright dentate. This is the internal architecture of the hippocampus that you must burn into your memory. This is where you see the first signs of mesial temporal sclerosis, as this yin yang appearance is lost in mesial temporal sclerosis. Now down below, we can see an example of where it is lost. Look for the yin yang, where is it? Here, the yin of the cornu aminus does not curve all the way around. It makes like one turn and then stops and the dentate is small. So this loss of the yin yang is an early sign of mesial temporal sclerosis. Below the cornu aminus is the subiculum. The subiculum literally means support. I remember this because subiculum and support both start with S. So you can remember that the subiculum is below the cornu aminus supporting it, S for support, like a table. Below the subiculum is the interrhinal cortex. It's the last part of the hippocampal formation, and you can remember this because it's at the edge of the hippocampal formation, and both enterhinal and edge start with the letter of the E. Also here is the fimbria. Fimbria means cilia. This structure looks like a small cilia projecting off of the top of the corneal aminus. I remember that fimbria and flapping and free all start with F. And this structure looks like a little cilia or fimbria that's flapping free off of the top of the cornu aminus. It also connects with the fornix, which also starts with F. So it all works. Now a bit about terminology. The term, quote, hippocampus proper only refers to the cornu aminus, that T2 dark spiraling line the yin of the yang. 
All of the other structures like the dentate, the subiculum, the internal cortex are all part of the hippocampal formation when they are combined with the cortex. Now, as we move posterior, we come to the tail, which is very thin and tapers rapidly as it spirals upward behind the brainstem. Remember, this was the look that caused the early anatomist to give it the name hippocampus. This is the tail of the hippocampus, which truly looks like a hippocampal or seahorse tail. So really, the theme of hippocampal anatomy is the spiral. On every single hippocampal MRI, you should look for that T2 dark line of the cornu aminus spiraling into the dentate to make that yin yang. If this is lost and the dark line stops before it spirals, this is an early sign of mesial temporal sclerosis. So here on the patient's left, we see the normal yin yang. The dark line of the cornu aminus goes all the way around spiraling like a ram's horn. However, on the patient's right, where there is mesial temporal sclerosis, you can see it start to spiral, but then it just abruptly stops. This is because the neurons of the CA subfield that make up the corneal aminus are lost in mesial temporal sclerosis. And because they are lost, you can't see that black band that they create on imaging. So you lose the spiral. So now you know the basics of hippocampal anatomy. Remember, the spiral is the key finding to look for on any hippocampal imaging. I hope that I really burned that into your hippocampus. If you like this video, you can like or subscribe it to see more. Also, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram where I'm at teachplaygrab. Remember, there's nothing more to life than learning, living, and eating.